Welcome to this week's episode of Brainstorm, where we give you a glimpse into the world of science for this Wednesday, November 21st, 2012. We begin with an update from the world of medicine. Biomedical engineers from Harvard have developed a new biocompatible material with a number of useful applications. It's a gel sponge, particularly from alginate gelatin derived from seaweed. What makes this material so exciting is it allows three-dimensional structures to be injected rather than surgically implanted. The sponge material is formed by carefully freezing the alginate solution, allowing pure ice crystals to form and concentrate it, after which it thaws, leaving behind a sturdy gelatin matrix with large pores from where the crystals were. To demonstrate how flexible and robust the material was, the researchers pushed star and heart-shaped sponges through a syringe. With these capabilities, the sponges could have many uses, including cellular scaffolding. The network of pores is large enough to contain stem cells, meaning regeneration patches could be created and injected to fit the injury exactly, with tissue regrowing as the sponge harmlessly degrades over time. For a simpler application, the sponge could be filled with a therapeutic protein or other drug that needed a slow time release. Next in development, we'll be customizing the rate of degradation, a major goal being the sinking with regeneration, so gelatin dissolves as fast as the new tissue would grow. Next is a story from the world of technology. Many times on Brainstorm, we've discussed the limitations of current computer technology and the advances that may overcome them. Generally, it's related to transistors, but data storage is also reaching its limits. As you may know, hard drive disks store binary data in the form of magnetic fields. Across the surface are essentially tiny magnetic dots in one of two orientations that represent 0 and 1. The more densely these dots can be packed together, the more information a hard drive can store. However, there's obviously a limit, because if the magnetic dots get too close, they interfere with each other. This could lead to spontaneous flipping of ones and zeros, making storage extremely unstable. Which is where scientists and engineers from the University of Texas come in, as they've been developing and testing a new kind of hard drive. You see, the aforementioned interference is due to the disks being the same material, which is obviously magnetic. If each magnetic bit could be separated by a non-magnetic material, the density could be greatly increased while maintaining stability. So the Texas-based team have been working with block copolymers, self-assembling materials capable of forming patterns. When given certain guides etched into the surface, the polymers can form patterns of dots or lines, like in a hard drive but at an even smaller scale. An important development was a special chemical coating that assisted the assembling, allowing each dot to find the correct orientation with just some heat. Development and testing will continue, but these advanced materials can already assemble in around a minute and have the potential to increase digital storage density fivefold. Our final story comes from the world of chemistry. A team headed by UC Berkeley scientists has developed a new method for producing biofuel using an old method. It's based on bacterial fermentation discovered in 1914 and used in both world wars. Fermentation by yeast converts sugar into ethanol, but this bacteria converts both complex and simple sugars into a mix of ethanol, butanol, and acetone. During World War I, the acetone was used by the British to manufacture a gunpowder alternative. Butanol and acetone were used to synthesize rubber during World War II, but this fermentation method hasn't been used commercially since the 60s. A major breakthrough with this new work is a way to separate the three products without distillation. Using non-toxic organic solvents, mostly butanol and acetone, can be extracted from the fermenting broth, using less than 10% of the energy needed for distillation. It just so happens that the proportions produced are ideal for the chemical conversion of these two substances into larger organic compounds. Right now, they've successfully produced a substance that is essentially diesel, using only a chemical catalyst and these biologically derived compounds. One advantage of this process is its flexibility. Changing the reaction conditions could result in a variety of products, different blends of biodiesel, shorter carbon chains like gasoline, branch chains like jet fuel, and obviously precursors to plastics. The bacteria can also use various feedstocks, agriculturally derived sugars and starches, but hopefully nutrients from plant waste and cellulose. Either way, it's more encouraging work, and the team thinks their refined process could be commercially viable within 5 to 10 years. Well, hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please consider subscribing and be sure to check the links in the video description.